Well, good morning, my friends. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion. Welp, since I told you yesterday that my check engine light came on again, my grandpa had already recommended a solution for a, what he thought it might be, so the part was in here. So now that the check engine lights come back on, look who needs the attention now all of a sudden. Um, I'm just gonna take it over the mechanic now and see if that's the part that will uh, will fix this situation. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Let's see if my all-knowing grandfather is right about this one once again. Yeah, I know I'm out of windshield wiper fluid, sorry guys. But even though it's only like a mile drive, I still have to sit in traffic the whole way there. Well, I just got to my mechanic and found out that he's on vacation until the middle of May, so we're gonna have to find an alternative solution. Well, there are a few oddities in this neighborhood I've always wanted to show you guys and I always forget to do it, so I figured, you know what, today let's do it. So let's go over, I'm gonna show you guys the big nose. So check this out, right past this uh, weird free bench, you have an entire like storefront that's a, a big giant nose. Look at that guy. I know, grow up, right? Yeah, I thought that was interesting. And then also this bent surfboard. Wow, that's intense. You can never not look cool with a monkey riding on your back. I think it's one of those like rules for life. Automatic cool status. A lot of people think it was the music that made Michael Jackson cool in the 80s. It wasn't. It was having bubbles on his back. Oh, there we go. There we go. Cool artwork. Oh yeah, I know that site. We got helicopters everywhere now. Now let's head over by the Ronald McDonald house. I want to show you something over there by that. Now I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that what we're about to see is not part of the Ronald McDonald house. However, it's right on the other side of it. Okay, so this is actually what I wanted to show you guys. This is a, uh, this is a house that's been closed down, but people have broken in and kind of graffitied the heck out of it. And it actually is kind of funny because they decorated it with the In-N-Out logo <laughs> and put the In-N-Out burger like palm trees and everything on it that are on all their um, on all their drink cups and everything. But then when you start walking around to the side, well, first off, you realize Batman was here. But then as you walk along to the side, you get treated to a little bit more. <laughs> You got uh, you got Super Mario over here hanging out with Mickey, and then you've got the Simpsons. You got Bart, and you got Homer, who's a little bit hard to see in there. Then you got Patrick and SpongeBob. Yeah, I just thought that was funny. Okay, and then you can tell right there in the window frame by the uh, the legs and the hands sticking out that there used to be some art there And then there's a sheet down here So if you turn it upside down, you can kind of see what it used to be Yeah, I guess it's daycare And of course as I'm walking around filming with big signs that say Property closed to the public don't enter. There's somebody looking out the window inside. They're going. What are you doing out there, man? I'm like I'm filming the art. What are you doing? So that's why all over Los Angeles, every time like a building is closed down or anything, they always put like gates or fences up because like homeless people, drug people, they all end up taking over those properties and then next thing you know, there's like a fire because something was going on in there that shouldn't have been. All right, so here's the lowdown. I went to AutoZone again, I borrowed their reader and now it's saying that my uh, engine control module is bad. So they want $360 for the part at AutoZone, but I'm looking on eBay and seeing that you can buy tons and tons of secondhand ones for like 30 or 40 bucks. So I placed a call to my grandpa to see if um, putting a used one in is okay and we'll go from there. Well, I'm taking Jaw out for a walk now and then I'm going to 
head over to Copy Man. I have to print out a return label, mail something back, and then I'm going to uh, do our vlog over there. And then we're gonna head over to my friend Kevin's house in the valley, so it's gonna be a long day. Actually, not a long day, it'll be a good day, but just a handful of things to get done today. Well, I went ahead and used my tax return to buy a new camera. So I'm gonna be getting rid of this one. I'm gonna be selling this camera and eagerly awaiting the big brother to the one that I already use. It's a little bit, um, basically it's just weatherproofed, so it'll be better for when I go on trips. It can get rained on and it'll be fine. It has more megapixels. It's just a little bit better camera overall and I just couldn't afford it when I got this one, so now I upgraded and uh, I'm gonna get rid of this guy. I've spent the last uh, probably two weeks since I came back from my trip. Over the last two weeks I have looked into every camera within my price range, any brand, anything there is, and there's one thing that people that vlog always say, or people that are in the camera industry always say, and I find it to be 100% true, there is no one perfect camera. There is, the, every camera that you look into, there's always one thing that just doesn't work, so I think I found the best option in my price range, and it, it was actually on the lower end of my price range, so I got lucky in that way. So I figure after I sell this camera, um, even at a little bit of a discount, I think I should only be out of my pocket about 300 bucks, which will also mean, I bet you it pees on that tree, yep. So, which will also mean I probably won't have to use an external microphone anymore. I won't have to worry about batteries as much because the battery life's much better on it. And um, yeah, I ended up switching over to the Canon 80D. I looked into a bunch of Sony cameras, but just, the battery life and not having a, uh, a screen that flips out was kind of, uh, that kind of weeded me out. And I don't really plan on shooting in 4K, so. So the plan for the vlog today is I'm gonna show you guys where it used to be a famed jazz club where just about every big jazz musician of the 60s performed there. I mean, we're talking Coltrane, Miles Davis, Bill Evans, and the man himself who the club was named after who owned it was a fabulous jazz musician in his own right. We're gonna go take a look at what used to be Shelly's Manhole. Now this was a jazz club that was right there on Coenga Boulevard, right in between Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard. And Shelly Mann, the man himself, Ran this club for a few years. You can actually find a handful of live albums that were recorded there. Now this was located on a pretty interesting section of Coanga because right next to Shelley's Manhole was also Wally Hyder's studio, which I vlogged before. And right above Wally Hyder's studio used to be where Rita Hayworth's father ran a dance school. So this was a hopping neighborhood. Now, if you're not familiar with who Shelly Mann was, Shelly Mann was a big time drummer in the jazz age of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. He was um, a band leader. He had his own band. It was called Shelly Mann and His Men on Contemporary Records, which was a big jazz label of the day. And he was also pretty much their session drummer. He was their go-to guy whenever they needed a drummer. Now, Shelly Mann, had an interesting story because he ended up in 1960 opening the spot that we're gonna go eventually go see down there and ran it for 12 years hosting the greatest jazz players of its day. Now I always like to throw in any kind of connection to my own life that I can. And right around the corner is a small connection to Shelly Mann and my life. Now in the year 2001, when I was getting out of music school at MI, Musicians Institute, I saw an ad for a record label, literally a label that was reissuing vinyl records, high quality records. They were looking for an intern. I went and got a job there and two days out of the week, my life turned into spending my days here at this place in front of us, Bernie Grunman Mastering. Now Bernie Grunman is, I would say, and most would say the number one mastering specialist in the record industry. He's done all of Michael Jackson's records. He's done all of Prince's records. His business here has done most all the rap records. Bernie, before he started his own business here, 
He was the head mastering supervisor over at A&M Records for Herp Alpert during the 70s and into the 80s. Now, before that, Bernie got his start by literally packing up his car with all of his possessions in Arizona and showing up at Contemporary Records and asking them for a job. He had a knowledge of electronics, they liked his gumption, and he ended up uh, getting trained to be their mastering guy. So Bernie actually got his very first job in mastering and his very first start in the industry at Contemporary Records. The same label that Shelly Mann was playing for. Now during that time, and I guess it would have been 2001, the person that I worked for found out that Contemporary Records, the owner had died and left everything in the company to his son. Well, my boss was friends with his son and one day he took me down to Venice to what was left of Con Contemporary Records. When we showed up, I was pretty excited because I knew the history, I would looked into it a little bit to know that it was one of the biggest and best jazz labels of its day. When we showed up, it was a public storage facility the size of a garage with only lacquers in it. Pretty depressing. Something that big was resorted to a tiny little box of a storage space. Now through that job, we would go record shopping constantly as part of our job. And so I would actually see Shelly Mann Records because the label that I worked for, we would release a lot of jazz records. But the name Shelly Mann didn't really mean much more to me beyond that. Until I was watching a documentary on the band Love featuring Arthur Lee. Now in that documentary, they talk about a club that Arthur Lee performed at called Beto Lido, and they also interview the drummer of the Doors, John Densmore. What's up, Argyle? So John Densmore tells a story in the documentary about how in 1966 and 67, he would come hanging out at Shelley's Manhole to watch all the greatest jazz players, and he would say he would come watch Miles Davis and John Coltrane. Then he said he would go around the corner to the Cosmo Alley. Cosmo Alley is actually right in front of us. And at the time, it was actually blocked off halfway through, so it actually didn't go all the way up through, and he said he would come around the corner because the music was so loud in the alleyway that you couldn't get in. Like, the doors are packed over here to Beto Lido, which was right over here. The old Beto Lido where Arthur Lee would perform they would actually perform right in here. I know I've done this vlog before, so if you've seen it, it's all part of this story. They would perform inside this building, this club inside here, but it would pack out so much that it would flow into the street and they would charge people admission to enter this part of the, at the time it was an alley. So you would actually have to pay to stand in the street. So John Densmore says that he would walk around the corner from Shelley's manhole, so we're gonna take the reverse route and we'll pretend we're gonna pass John Densmore. I'm gonna show you where Shelley's manhole was. So when he says he walked around the corner, that's actually why I wanted to do this vlog, is because I had never heard of this place until I saw that documentary. And then you come up here and start looking around and I was like, where would that have been? Where would that have been? Because it's a little confusing. They've remodeled the building. It's part of a whole strip of buildings, but that particular building, they've completely remodeled it so it doesn't look the same. But there is one piece of evidence that shows this is where Shelley's was. So, this is Coanga. Now right here on the corner was Wally Hyder recording. I did that vlog, if you wanna see that one, go look up. Um, the George Harrison, Eric Clapton story. And then you go down here and where uh, my buddy Lennard's favorite place is, Kitchen 24, that used to be Shelly's manhole. Now here's the piece of evidence. You can tell when I match up the photos, it's all changed because there was never even a second level up here. But this right here was it. That's where the doors would have been right there. And the proof is right here. I don't know how many years I've walked past this and never noticed it until I came looking for the address. And you see this. Shelley's Manhole, 1608 North Coanga, 
from 1960 to 1972, home of the world famous jazz club. Pretty cool. Now when I saw that plaque on the ground, there's part of me that wondered why it wasn't on the building and why they put it on the ground. And then I saw one article online that said that the reason they thought it was was because it was in memorial of all those great jazz artists and all the people that hung out at that club putting out their cigarette butts right there on that front. Well, it's a busy street now. It's pretty much like this constantly, but right there's where Shelly's manhole would have stood. If you want to hear something recorded here, there was a really great Bill Evans record that was recorded here. And on YouTube, there's a, uh, a handful of live performances that you can see the inside of the club. Now, from what it looks like to me, you would have walked in the, straight into the front doors and then off to the right, the stage would have been that way and they would have performed lengthwise to the to the crowd that way that's what it looked like online to me if you ever attended this place and i'm wrong leave it in the comments below how it was laid out there it was shelly's manhole now i gotta go print off a few labels real quick and mail something back so we're gonna go do that together go buy a little bit more juice, and then uh, head off to the valley. 17 years I've walked up and down that street, never saw that plaque on the ground, never knew that place existed until I saw that documentary. Go figure. Only in Hollywood. Well, I called my grandpa and talked to him about the car, and he's still convinced it's the oxygen sensor, so I'm gonna replace that first before I do anything else. All right, copy Matt, you never let me down. Alright, got those printed off. Now I just gotta find a UPS drop box or a drop location to mail those back. Believe it or not, this is the property where Valentino got married one of his times to his very, very short-lived marriage to Gene Acker. Way back in the 20s when there was a house there, Valentino's friend owned that house and they got married in the backyard. I'm gonna hope this place will let me uh, do a UPS return here. All right, good on the Hollywood Mail Store. They let me leave it here. Even though it says that it's UPS, a lot of times places out here won't let you do stuff just because they can't make any money off it. They'll just say like, no, 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 they won't take it from here or whatever, so. This doorway was in a movie that I have vlogged, but I didn't vlog this doorway yet. I will someday though. Now let's go get some juice. I know I bought some yesterday, but I've been mixing it with the Trader Joe's stuff because Trader Joe's stuff I think is better for you, but it doesn't taste as good. There we go. And I also got one of these chai things because it reminded me of the one I had the other night when I was live streaming. They gave me so good I want one right now. Is that how you ingratiate yourself at a friend's house? You pee on their trees? John's been out here watching this, this squirrel that's hiding. John, where's the squirrel? Well, John and I are back. We watched the Celtics game and we watched the Red Sox game. Ironically, my friend Kevin is not a Boston fan. We just happened to watch those games. So we're back now. I want to thank Shelly Coleman for becoming my newest Patreon. And speaking of Shelly's, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I hope you enjoyed getting to hear about Shelly's manhole. And uh, if you're a jazz fan, it's probably a place that you've heard of before and now you got to match up where it was. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.